So students, today we're going to uh, look at a few concepts uh, related to namespaces and creating a library. I'll demo a small library and um, also look at creating a you know, um, header file and a make file um, corresponding to that and creating a small uh, test function to test the library. So uh, let's start and I'll just uh, open my uh, folder, home folder. And as you can see, it's got a bunch of folders and I just created a new folder called uh, PM Utils, Utils standing for utilities and PM I'm just uh, using my initials. So we'll use the uh, Vim text editor, which is, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's powerful but simple. And uh, so for today's tutorial, we're not doing any complex uh, debugging or using special IDE features. So this would work. So we're defining the uh, util, uh, the pmutils.h file, and we're using this um, define uh, if and def define to make sure that there are no uh, it's not included recursively as I talked in the previous lecture and uh, so we'll create a namespace so namespaces in C++ they allow you to create names uh, that are probably not unique so you don't know when you import a library whether uh, a, a simple name is unique or not and uh, so if you create it inside a namespace you're somewhat protected so namespaces can be nested so in python namespaces are you know similar to the concept of a module and in java it's similar to the concept of a package so uh, let's say get ascii so get ascii could be a function in some other library but because I put it inside the PM utils namespace, which is not, which is probably not too common, um, uh, it won't clash with other libraries if I try to uh, use it together with other libraries. But you know, I I also increased the, uh, you know, made the function name somewhat unique by including the KB input, and so uh, I described the function in the header. So I don't put the implementation, I just put the prototype and what you can see is in the prototype you don't need to um, specify the name of the parameters. So it just needs to know that there is a function that returns a void or nothing and also it has two inputs. One is a character pointer and another is an integer. So usually character pointers um, means it's a string. So string uh, is a bunch of characters and it starts with the first character so you just give the address of the first character where the uh, string is stored so now uh, I'll go to define the implementation of this function so I just created a new file called pmutils.cpp note, note the cpp extension for c++ files versus .c for um, C files and uh, so I'm going to define the function and what you'll see is uh, I use the namespace so which function do I want to define I want to define the function within the PM utils namespace and uh, the name of the function so now because I'm defining it I need to use actual uh, uh, names I, I need to give names to the uh, uh, input parameters so uh, let me go back and check in the header file whether the name matches so it matches so I won't get any linking errors where uh, you know the name is there and then when I use it uh, it's a different name then it won't work too well uh, so now so n is the uh, number of characters that's uh, going to get input so there, there's this function called gets that's used in many uh, programs um, previously, but it's been deprecated because it doesn't do the bounds check. It doesn't check that the memory is allocated properly. So it's been replaced with gets 
underscore s in the new standard, but it seems that it's not been implemented universally yet, though uh, I see in the forums that people are talking about implementing it. So this is an alternative uh, which uses, um, so I'll use the function get c from the stdio header. So you can see that uh, I initially typed while one and then I replaced with while uh, true. So uh, in C, it used to be that one is true or anything other than zero is true and zero is false. But uh, later, uh, the true and false uh, keywords were introduced so I can use the true or false keyword, note the uh, small case. So case matters in C, C++. And so you get a single character from STD in, which is the standard input. And what you do is uh, you check if, it's, uh, if the user has hit the enter key, which comes as slash n or a new line, and, uh, or if the buffer is full. So if any of these conditions are met, then what I'll do is I'll terminate the string uh, with a null character. Note that the, the, the convention of using the null character for uh, string termination is just a convention, and it's used by many functions in the stdio library, for example, printf, and, uh, but it's not necessary that you always have to do that. Uh, so that's the implementation of the PM utils. So now to compile this, instead of compiling it from the um, command line, what I'll do is I'll uh, also uh, create a make file, which is a usual way to do uh, to manage small projects in C, C++ and many other languages, um, many other small programming projects, small and large also, but. Um, so what, I, what we need is uh, to get the object file of pmutils.o from, uh, from the pmutils.cpp and .h files. So this is the target, pmutils.o, and the source or the prerequisites are pmutils.cpp and pmutils.h. So if there is a way to create this and these are not already in the folder, it will the make system will create it and what you need is the compiler which is Z++ and so I use is uh, as you know th these are common in make files to define the compiler separately and to define the flags for the compiler separately so that you can later switch compilers if you want and then uh, that C means that you just want to compile and not uh, create the uh, main executable. So we, so we ran make and you see it's created pmutils.o. So now we'll create a short test function to test the uh, whether this worked correctly or not. And uh, so I include the pmutils.h uh, which defines our function and then um, we'll just save this so that it shows up properly in the uh, VIM editor so it shows up uh, with a proper syntax highlighting and so we we'll create the main function which is the entry point of many executables um, standalone executables especially and we'll use the printf function please enter your name here and uh, notice that I didn't put a new line so because I didn't put a new line here um, what happens is it will just you know stay there and so uh, uh, so so now I'm gonna call the function we just created uh, and because it's in the PM utils namespace we have to use this notation you know uh, colon colon to get into the namespace and then use the function and now I don't have the variable to put it in so I just defined a um, constant buffer underscore n to define the length of the buffer and I just uh, reserve some memory for the buff buffer over there 
uh, which gets allocated when main is called or when the uh, executable, so main is called when the executable is called, so gets allocated when uh, the executable is called, and then I send it to the function we just created, and I print back uh, the function. So, um, uh, sorry, the print, I print back the contents of the buffer, so if, uh, and then I put a new line, because the buffer uh, contents doesn't have a new line in itself, and I want this to be in a new line. And uh, so, uh, we'd also written uh, things such that, uh, it, you know, there, uh, if, we, if we ran out of buffer space, then it didn't uh, do anything. It, uh, so it only used uh, as much buffer space as needed. So let's try with a smaller buffer space. Uh, setting um, and see what happens. So we created this test program. We need to create the uh, compile com uh, compile thing. And uh, so so pmutils test um, will needs pmutils.o the object file and pmutils test.cpp the uh, the C program file. And again, we need to call the compiler with the flags. You might have noticed I've used the uh, warning all flag and some optimization flags. And uh, so you can look up the flags uh, and some uh, what the flags are in the manual for C++, uh, sorry, Z++. Um, and uh, so input the uh, object files and the uh, source files. And so I put it in the clean also, so that if people want to clean um, clean the compiled files, they can do it. So let's test it. So now you can see that we have an error here. Printf was not declared. So how can that be? We declared print, printf in the pmutils.cpp. Well, uh, so we didn't include pmutils.cpp here, so we only included pmutils.h which doesn't have stdio.h, so printf is not yet declared. So you can see that the implementation can include libraries that's not necessarily, you know, uh, public, publicly known in the header file. So, so now you can see um, it's working properly, and uh, we just got this... Um, um, hello uh, uh, comma PR so when we did just three characters why did we get just two characters so the two characters are there because uh, the third character is the null null character and so another another question might be why did we get this uh, you know why were we able to type the whole uh, thing uh, my whole name uh, when we could uh, when the program would should have stopped uh, midway uh, in between uh, so the program when we got three characters it should have stopped so what happens is the operating system usually in the command line uh, interface with for efficiency purposes it only sends the characters uh, to uh, to your program when it uh, gets new lines or end of files until that the operating system handles the uh, handles the uh, input itself for a while so that there's no uh, too much back and forth between the program and the operating system. So that's usually only true for um, this uh, command line style programs and so it would depend on from operating system to operating system and how much load there is currently whether uh, you know it allows me to go beyond that uh, tree buffer setting and um, so so this is the ASCII input, which I'm not very fond of. So usually what I do is I uh, get the uh, Q string, the QT string um, object, and get some way to input Unicode characters so that it can be uh, input in any language in the, uh, that's there in the world and not be limited to the very limited ASCII 128 uh, alphabets of the ASCII set.
So uh, thank you for watching this video.